to our next speaker, and, and some of you guys will know and remember uh, Anu Kishore from our IMG Careers Conference that he kindly attended uh, four or five months ago now, and, and as you may remember, is an emergency medicine trainee in the Southeast, and, and in that conference, Anu Kishore really broke down the career option of emergency medicine and, and, was, and got some great feedback, and we thought it'd be great to bring him back in a more generalized route today so not purely for emergency medicine but we've got a new Kishore back again he's going to talk a bit about training in the UK the kind of things that maybe you need to be thinking about the kind of ideas that you need to be processing before you make big decisions in terms of the line of progression of your own career in the UK so without further ado I'm going to um, reintroduce Anup Kishore back in and, and thank you once again for coming and um, and hand over to yourself uh, hi Aman hi Pooja thank you so much uh... Yeah, fine. Uh, a very good morning to one and all. Uh, lovely to see you all on this uh, sunny Saturday morning. Uh, hope you guys in the UK are enjoying the sunshine in the spring. Uh, I'm Anoop. I'm one of the uh, emergency medicine registrars working in the south of England. Uh, um, I am an international medical graduate uh, who graduated from India and moved to the UK in 2017. Uh, I started my training in emergency medicine in 2018 and currently I'm a registrar uh, working in the south. Uh, I would be speaking about uh, the specialty training in the UK as a whole. Uh, happy to take some questions in the end. I will also leave my email ID and Facebook ID at the end. And I'm happy for, to answer all the queries that you can email me or drop me a text. Let's get started. Uh, to practice as a consultant in the UK, uh, you need to be on the GP's register or the specialty register of the GMC. Okay? This can be achieved either through training or non-training. If it is as achieved through training, then you get a CCT, which is your Certificate of Speciality of Training, Completion of Training. Uh, for non-training, it is via the CESA route. The duration of training varies across specialities. Uh, it is three years for the GP uh, and five to eight years for other specialities. Certain specialities offer a run-through training program. That is, you apply uh, or you start from ST1 and then you finish your training at a stretch you need not apply for the higher specialty training or subspecialty training in the middle. Uh, certain specialities, uh, you have to reapply for specialty training. There is an opportunity uh, for you to specialize in dual, specialized, dual specialties or subspecialize. For example, you can specialize in emergency medicine and ICU, or you can specialize in anesthetics and ICU, or respiratory and ICU and the duration varies accordingly. For example, the duration of emergency medicine training program, if you start from ST1, is six years. If you would like to pursue ICU as an additional specialty, then the training period might be increased to eight and a half to nine years. You can either complete your training as full-time or go for less than full-time if you'd like to do so. However, if you are on a Tier 2 or a healthcare visa, then you need to be at least on 80% less than full-time to meet the visa requirements. If you are interested in research or would like to have a career break in the middle of your training, there is an opportunity to do so. There is a term called out-of-program, which is your out-of-program research or research opportunities, out-of-program pause, out-of-program career grab, or out of program experience. In the middle of your training, if you would like to you know, pursue a degree in expedition medicine or uh, diving medicine, you can apply for out of program experience or you can even apply for uh, out of program pause or career break to do uh, some humanitarian activities in other countries to gain some experience in other countries uh, and then come back and continue your training. Uh, for this, discuss early with your educational supervisors, uh, your training program directors, and once they approve it, uh, you can go and pursue and come back and complete your training. Yes, there is a lot of competition to obtain a training number in the specialities. However, it is achievable. Uh, you can refer to the competition ratios uh, for various specialities uh, in the Health Education of England website. It's just to get an idea of the competition ratios. It is not to dent your uh, confidence or not. 
uh, some tips and tricks uh, to obtain a successful training number. Your first job, your first job in the NHS is very crucial. It lays the foundation for your successful career in the NHS. So choose your first job wisely. I would recommend you to commence a non-training job. You commence a career in the NHS with a non-training job. Spend ample or adequate time getting accustomed to the system, and then you apply for your training post. Because we have seen lots of people dive straight into training, and then they struggle during the initial few years. But if you spend enough time in a non-training job and get to know the system better, then your training might be very easy for you. Uh, once you are successful in your interview for your non-training job, speak to your department leads if you can start off by doing some shadowing shift. This gives you an opportunity to observe and understand the system better. You will have a hospital induction where they orient you towards the hospital systems, the IT systems, the hospital policies, etc. You then will have a department induction where they take you through the department, explain you the local guidelines, referral process, uh, e-prescribing, uh, where you can access the guidelines, your uh, referral bleep numbers, etc. Spend in time, as I mentioned earlier, spend enough time in your first job, okay? Pace yourself well. Get accustomed to the systems in the NHS as a whole. Okay, don't rush. You have ample time. Uh, once you commence your post, uh, you will have an educational supervisor or a clinical supervisor. Uh, they are the first go-to person. They are responsible for overseeing you. Schedule an earlier meeting with them. Uh, discuss your plans. Make a personal development plan, and they will guide you accordingly how to achieve those. Next one is choosing a speciality. Uh, this is another important aspect. Explore your interests, okay? There are various specialities, for example, uh, allergy and immunology, uh, public health, histopathology, which are less explored. So try exploring those also. While choosing a speciality, consider all aspects of the speciality, okay? Not just the duration of training. See if it suits you. It provides you a good work-life balance. Don't rush in or opt for a speciality just because your colleague or your friend has opted for that, okay? See if that speciality suits you individually, if it suits you and your family, it provides you a good work-life balance and you, are, you have interest in that speciality and then opt for it. Don't just consider the training period, consider the period after you become a consultant. So uh, your training period might be less than 10 years, however, you will be practicing as a consultant for the next 20 to 30 years. So consider all the aspects before you dive in and choose your speciality. Uh, once you uh, choose your speciality or would you like to know more about the uh, specialities, then try doing some taste shifts in the specialities to give you an idea of how it functions. Uh, you can speak to your educational super supervisor and they'll help you get some uh, observerships or taste shifts in that speciality. For instance, if you are interested in GP, do a tastership in the GP surgery. Observe how they function. What are the daily duties of a GP? Face-to-face uh, -face consultations, online consultations, follow-up, repeat prescriptions, how it works, etc. Uh, if you are interested in your specialty in a secondary care, speak to the registrars uh, and consultants when you're doing a tastership. Tell them that you are interested in the specialty and they will guide you uh, on how to build up your portfolio uh, and how to obtain a successful training number in that speciality. Then uh, visit the Health Education England website and go through the person specifications. Uh, they, there might be certain or minor tweaks uh, every year to make sure that you read all the essential criteria. You must fulfill all the essential criteria and try to fulfill as much desirable, cri desirable criteria as much you can, as you can. Uh, I'm not asking you to spend around 10,000 or 12,000 pounds to do an additional degree because you score a point on that. Be practical. Try to do, uh, try to boost up your portfolio by doing some teaching sessions, audit quip, because all of them are a part of the desirable criteria. Next is your uh, crest form. 
Uh, most of you might have heard about this. Uh, it is the certificate of readiness to enter in, into specialty training. I think the latest form is 2021 version. Uh, make sure that you have the latest version. Uh, these forms are for those who have completed internship in their home country uh, before coming to the UK and not com completed the UK Foundation Training Programme. Uh, go through the form, uh, understand what it says. Uh, there are strict criteria for the sign-off. Make sure you're aware of them. Discuss with the educational supervisor. Uh, start collecting evidences for the sign-off. Uh, ideally, it would be at least six months uh, before you can get your crest form signed, but they say a period of three to six months when you can get it signed off. Uh, most of the specialty interviews would like to have uh, ALS completed, which is your advanced life support. Make sure the ALS that you're doing is accredited and recognized by the Research Council UK. Uh, speak to your local research officer, the Research Council in your trust for a place in the course as early as possible. But if the places are overbooked because of COVID and because of the delay, uh, explore uh, for places across the country and make sure that you get your ALS booked and do it. There might be some last minute cancellations, but just don't rush in because you have to do it. But but make sure that you are, you are adequately prepared before you attempt your ALS. Portfolio. Each speciality will have a portfolio. Uh, I think the most common ones are the hardest one to obtain your foundation competencies. Uh, subscribe to them. There are other portfolios also uh, for each speciality. Uh, speak to your audit lead or your supervisor. Get involved in an audit. Make sure you uh, complete the audit cycle, uh, not just one cycle, because you need to complete the audit cycle to call yourself that you have participated in audit. Uh, get involved yourself in a quip. It is not mandatory for you to lead a quip or a quality improvement project, but you need to show involvement in a quip. Uh, try doing some teaching. There are opportunities for you to get involved with some uh, medical students teaching, teaching for foundation doctors, etc. Try to use those opportunities and once you have done your teaching make sure that you get your feedback forms collected and use that as an evidence uh, in your portfolio uh, if you have an opportunity then you can present your project or research or some cases uh, at your local conferences national or international conferences uh, usually the adverts for the training uh, come out by november so for example uh, for 2023 training the adverts would have come out by november 2022 okay to make sure that you pace yourself well so that you can plan to get your press form signed you, you have enough time to build your portfolio uh, and then you can start applying for your training uh, some of you might have heard about this exam which is the msra it is a multi-speciality recruitment assessment exam uh, it is an assessment exam which is currently used by many specialities uh, currently 12 specialities for entry into the postgraduate medical training uh, there are various courses and resources available uh, which gives you tips of how to ace this exam. Uh, make sure that you know the interview process uh, well in advance uh, because of the COVID, most of the interviews are virtual. Um, there might be a clinical scenario station, there might be an ethical scenario station, there might be a portfolio station, but sometimes they might also include a presentation station. Make sure that you know the uh, pattern of your interview stations. Uh, Go through the GMC good practice guidelines on the GMC website, which will help you through the uh, ethical scenario stations. Um, always make sure that your patient safety is not compromised when you're answering the questions. Make sure that the, the, the clinical care is not compromised with the patient. Uh, confidentiality is important. Uh, for the clinical scenarios, uh, I think going through your college website or the respective specialities of uh, where you can know the local guidelines, the best practice guidelines, uh, and that will help you uh, answer questions effectively in the clinical scenario. Um, for the portfolio station, as I mentioned, make sure that you are able to uh, provide a good summary of the portfolio during your portfolio station. Try doing some mock interviews with the registrars or the consultants just before the interview so that it boosts your confidence. Uh, on the day of the interview, stay calm and composed. Uh, once you are successful and you have an you have an opportunity to accept hold or decline a post okay uh, please go through the 
the uh, ORIEL website and make sure that you know the updated guidelines. So I think the current guidelines is you cannot hold for more than one specialty. For example, you have already holding an offer for a GP and you've also been offered a, a training post for a emergency medicine. If you hold the emergency medicine post or if you accept the emergency medicine post, then your GP post that you were holding earlier automatically gets canceled. So make sure that you know the process and uh, you accept or hold them with upgrades accordingly. Uh, the, the other important aspect is to rank your preferences wisely. So please have a chat with the uh, with the consultants or the registrars or the newly uh, recruited trainees who can guide you on how to rank your preferences. Uh, there are some. These are some of the references that I've used. Uh, all, most of the information is available on the respective college website, or you can go through the Health Education of England website, where you can access the uh, specialty uh, person specifications, the recruitment timelines, etc. Uh, uh, we are currently doing a survey on the UK training uh, and about the induction program for the IMGs. Uh, I would be grateful if you could all uh, spend a few minutes to answer the survey. You can just scan this QR code, uh, fill in the survey, and once you have done, uh, please pass it on to your friends uh, because we are planning to get more responses and then publish it so that the trust will have an idea of what is what are the requirements of an IMG and they can try help through their uh, induction process also. So please spend some time uh, to do this survey. I'll just give you a few seconds so that you can scan this QR code. I'll also try posting the a link um, in the chat section soon where you can. Uh, brilliant. Thank you, Anu. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Aman. Uh, I think I'll just give you a quick summary of the or overview of the training in the United Kingdom. Uh, this is my email address and my Facebook ID. Uh, feel free to drop me an email or uh, a, a text through Facebook Messenger, and I'm more than happy to answer as early as possible. Uh, I'm happy to take some questions if there are any. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you once again. Uh, I knew that was really, really helpful. Again, short to the point, um, you know, all the key points out there covered a lot of ground, uh, lots and lots of questions coming in, Anoop. So we're going to, because your line's a little bit choppy, so we were, we were, we were, we were dropping your, your words a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'll ask one key question that's come up twice now, and then if I can just forward the others on that you'll get on your screen, because I think that some of them are quite technical, particularly about emergency medicine as well, and I think they'd be quite useful. Um, to get your insight on those but one question that's come up twice is about shadowing which you mentioned um is shadowing compulsory my trust said that there will not be shadowing but i'll be supervised instead any advice for this particularly in the emergency department i think someone is asking about that yeah uh, shadowing is not compulsory but uh, it as i said it varies according uh, from trust to trust but uh, doing a shadowing job will uh, you know make you understand the local policies and the local system better uh, yes, if you are supervised in emergency medicine, you are not always alone. So you will have your registrars and consult and in certain trusts, you will have consultants throughout the day or even during the nights also. Uh, shadowing is just to, for you to get an idea rather than jumping into the field directly. You will have an idea of how the system works. And so there are candidates who have done shadowing and then and started doing the regular shift. So they are uh, it makes them easier for them to get accustomed uh, or to know the local policy. So I would encourage you, if there is an opportunity, to opt for shadowing shifts uh, and then commence your uh, regular job. Uh, now, it varies from trust to trust. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the trusts currently offer it, but some trusts, they say that they give some supervisions, but just speak to your trust if possible, do it. Yeah, super, super advice. And there's a few questions about, about that. So, Pooja, if we could just forward some of those across to uh, Anoop, I think that'll be really helpful for uh, attendees. But guys, please do reach out to Anoop. Um, he's giving you his Facebook handle. He's giving you his email address. Um, I know he's super helpful. He's helped lots of, we often forward queries about emergency medicine, in particular to, to Anoop. So please do um, use him for that because he's very, very helpful and generous with his time. Please do fill up that questionnaire that um, that he's put out there. And Anoop, if you do want to share it in the chat, please do, because the more people that you can get clicking that in and filling that in, uh, the better. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, again, very we value your time and we know you're busy. I know last time you just come off a night shift, I think. I don't know what the, the deal is today. Are you starting now or just finishing or what's the deal? 
No, I just finished my nights yesterday, so I think I had uh, at least 24 hours to. <laughs> okay, uh, hi. That's what you said. Well. Uh, thank you so much, for the Yeah, fantastic. Uh, you, you guys are just doing a wonderful job. And this gives a, an overview of the NHS to the new IMGs, actually. Thank Great. you. Thank Good you. Job. And it's only because of generous guys like you that we can put these kind of events on. So, so we really appreciate it, and and hopefully we'll we'll see you very very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Anoop. I've sent some questions your way. Um, so please, if you get a chance, answer them. Um, otherwise, yes, as uh, Amin has mentioned, that uh, you've kindly shared your contact details, which is always great. So thank you. Hope you managed to enjoy sure. the sunny day now, Anoop. Uh, yeah, great. Thank you. So, Thanks guys, guys have a good weekend. Bye.